Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Anne. I'm so excited to be here in St. George, Utah with my grandson Xander, who you're meeting today. I am so impressed. He sent me a picture last week of my French bread recipe, his first ever loaf of French bread that he made all by himself without any help. So I said, hey, we've got to put you on camera and show everybody that anybody can do this recipe. And not that he, he's not anybody, but if anybody has a desire to make bread at all, this is a great recipe to start with because it's got a, just a few ingredients. And I'm going to let Xander explain how he made the bread. So take it away, Xander. Okay, so first you're going to want... Um you're going to want two tablespoons of sugar, about two tablespoons of yeast. Now two tablespoons of yeast might sound like a lot, but we're going to make two very large loaves. And you're going to add two and a half cups of warm water, okay. but um, you're going to want it to be around 110 to 115 degrees. And for those hardcore bakers out there, you can use a meat thermometer to measure it out. We already have it measured, so I'm just going to pour it in. Okay. We're going to stir that. And we're going to wait about five minutes for it to uh, puff up. Proof. So now the yeast is nice and soft and puffy, like a living thing, because it is. Um, now we are going to add the salt and the olive oil. You're going to want to have one tablespoon of salt. That might seem like a lot, but it's bread, and bread needs a lot of salt. So we're going to put that in. And we're also going to have two tablespoons of olive oil. One. Two. So now that we have our two tablespoons of olive oil, we're going to stir. We're going, now we're going to add the bread flour. So we're going to add a cup and a half now. We're going to be using six cups in total, but right now we're just adding a cup and a half. You're going to want to take the wire whisk and just whisk it around so it's easier and to measure. Now we're going to take one cup. What you're going to do now is you're going to wait for ten minutes, and then you're going to come back and you're going to punch it down. Well, we're actually just going to add... Uh, more flour until we're ready to punch it down. We're gonna add more flour until we're ready to punch it down. <laughs> so we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes because my grandma wants me to show off that I'm in the digital age. <laughs> so we'll be back in 10. Now it should look all bubbly. Now this is this is different from other French breads. Uh, the bubbles are what give it its flavor and its like its look. So now we're going to add the remaining four and a half cups of flour. One cup at one, a time. One cup at a time. Stir it. Stirring in between. So my grandma's gonna measure out the next cup. She's gonna put it in. I'm just gonna keep stirring. <laughs> I'm going to vigorously stir this. Actually, making dough is very therapeutic. You get to use your en your own energy in the dough, and that makes it. It's called love energy, actually. Uh, okay, he's. We're gonna add a little bit more at a time. This is cup number three, right? Correct. But you okay, but keep going. It. Mix this in before yeah. we add the rest. And Grandma might stuffing. help him a little bit because hold on just a minute. I'm gonna take this right now and get all of the dough. We're gonna turn it around a little bit like this. Just like that. So that the dough gets incorporated quickly because once you start stirring, you can no longer stir. You now have to. Be a little bit tricky on getting the dough. That's right. And we're going to put the rest of the, is this our third cup? This is the rest of the third cup, yes. Yeah. So this is why we only add one cup at a time. I'm going to let it because to guess to what? It's already looking like it doesn't need much more flour. And we have another whole cup to go, right? Yeah, and a half. And a half. So this is when, like when you read a recipe, and it has talks about bread, it may say five to six cups, three to four cups, because it really just depends. And you can see, we don't need much more flour here, now that we've incorporated all of it. Okay. Okay. I'm just mentally preparing myself for the fourth cup. 
except that we're really not going to add any more. That's, oh. that's what's weird about this. Maybe a oh, little okay. bit more. Let's add just a little bit more. Okay. It always surprises us when we're making bread that it might not be what the recipe says. So you have to be flexible, like the bread. <laughs> this bread is too flexible. <laughs> it's too heavy. Yes. It takes strength to do this, doesn't it, Zander? You're going to get a good arm workout. Okay, so now what are we going to do now that you've kind of mixed in that you're going to leave the spoon in here and what are you doing next? We're going to let it rest for another 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, now that you've stared intently at your flour for 10 minutes without blinking, <laughs> um, we're going to, put, it should be kind of sticky, uh, but we're going to put a little flour on the countertop. Like spread that. that around. Yeah, spread it around. And um, now we're going to take the dough out of the bowl. So you can see you let it raise to 10 minutes. So now you see that it's raised for 10 minutes. Kind of stretchy and sticky right now. Yeah, stretchy and but sticky. We're going to add in a little bit more flour. Let's get some flour on the countertop over here. Okay. Scrape this off so that we have the maximum amount of dough. We're just going to kind of punch it down or shape it. We're just adding the rest of the flour so that it's not too sticky. Yeah. And for this, it's about a half a cup. So kind of knead that down a little bit. How long are we going to wait now? Now we're going to wait, you guessed it, 10 minutes. Okay, so after 10 minutes, you can see how it's already really puffy and like risen up. Um, so really, we're going to be doing this three more times because usually like you can, you can, uh, you can wait 10 minutes and punch it down. You can do that as many times as you want, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna do it uh, for 50 minutes. So we're gonna do it three more times. Uh, so, I'm just gonna. Kinda wanna get the air out of it. Yeah. Like this, a little bit. There we go, put it in another little ball, and so. This has been resting for 50 minutes uh, with 10 minute rests. We've been punching it down. So next you're gonna wanna take your knife. It's gotta be long and serrated. Now, if you're under the age of four and your parents aren't home, you might wanna wait. So we're gonna saw it. Be careful not to crush it. This might take a moment. Okay, that's good. So we've got now two now pieces we have, of dough. Now we have two big pieces of dough that are going to become two big loaves. And Grandma's going to roll out the first one, show you how it's done. So we're going to basically be punching it down again with our rolling pin. And we're going to roll it kind of flat again. And at this point, it's really nice and spongy, which is what creates the really great French bread. Okay, so you know what, and you don't need to do too much of that. So now we're going to take this and go across like this, and we're going to pinch the edges. Like this. And then we're going to place it. See the side down on parchment paper where we're going to actually let it raise so we're going to be making two whole loaves so we're going to raise two french breads i think what would work best sander we're going to let you do this one okay roll this out but i think we'll roll it out this way so that we turn it over it'll be a lot smoother than than what it is right here okay, okay. so you might need a sticky. little bit of yeah well, that's okay just actually put a little bit of flour on the rolling on, pin. on the rolling pin and it should work fine make yeah. sure yeah okay we're good you want to go down to all the way to the top all the way to the top up okay. here to so top. that you're rolling it evenly uh-huh oh that's not good there yeah, we go it is. no it's totally perfect okay. roll it in the middle so it's, we've got an even amount of dough Okay, so it's about the same size as the other one. Now roll it this way. Let's see, we've got some bubbles in it. We're still trying to get a few bubbles out. Okay. Just it is a little bit sticky. Hold on. We need Let's... a little bit more flour. Yep. All right. 
it's a work in progress figuring this out. Very gently, because we don't want to, we want to keep it still puffy looking. Okay. And then you're going to take this and you want to pinch these edges together. Okay. So that the seam will go into the dough. Okay. This. Pinch it nice and tight. Uh -huh. Just on the very edge. Oh, on the very edge, yes. Uh -huh. very, okay. very edge. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to look perfect, and it doesn't, but you know what? When it starts, so you can see how nice. Take this dough and put it over, put this dough other, on the. On next to the other one, right next to it. Okay. And what are we going to do now? How long are we going to get let this raise? We're going to let this raise for. for about 30 minutes. And now, after you let it rise for 30 minutes, voila, what a beautiful magic trick called science. So first we're going to, we're going to take an egg and we're gonna bully it. Harder than that, all right. We're gonna bully this egg, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bully it even more. All right. So now, before we put on the egg wash, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make three diagonal slashes, but you want to make sure that you don't crush the bread. So we're going to go one. Oh, that was really not big. Too deep, just a very little one. Two, three. I was not expecting that. Anyways, one, two. This is the fun part. Three. Yes. Okay. I was not expecting that. Anyways. Now you're going to egg wash. You're going to wash the bread with egg. So now what you can do is you can put sesame or poppy seed on. You can you can put it on. It's up to you. So we're going to talk about the pain. So we have a pizza stone, so we're going to be able to use this, but if you don't have one of these, then you're going to take like a jelly roll pan about like this, the pan uh, from the beginning, so it won't stick. Now we have this, so we can just, wow. Make sure that it goes right to the edge. Yes. Okay. Now what? we've been preheating our oven to 400 degrees. That's pretty hot. We're gonna bake it for 22 to 28 minutes. So as soon as you get to 22 minutes, you might want to check on it to make sure it's good. If it looks good, you can take it out. Then just keep checking on it until you reach come, it to 22 come minutes. Come take a look at our pizza stone. Okay. This is our pizza stone. It's, it's a stone, stone that pizza stone. goes on. But today we're putting French bread on it. Yeah, sure. This is what bread looks like. <laughs> Perfectly baked French bread. Doesn't this French bread look good? And in a few minutes, we're going to cut a slice to show you what the inside looks like when it's cooled just a bit. So because we use the pizza stone, it's evenly browned on the bottom as it is up here. So that's just a fun little thing if you have a pizza stone. So we're going to cut it real nice like this. There we go. Oh. There we go. It's still hot and steamy. So it's still hot and steamy. Um, it's the texture inside, it's nice and soft. So it's like soft on the outside and like it's kind of, the egg wash gave the outside kind of nice glaze. So now we're gonna put some butter and apricot preserves on it. This is how you butter something. Actually, that's not how you do it. I'm doing it wrong yet. I failed, so. Pick um. <laughs> it up and do it again. And <laughs> that's not how you butter something. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have a lot of butter on this. It'll it'll melt. <laughs> or we or can we let's uh, this is this seems like a little much. Okay. Um Alright, now we have some nice apricot preserves. It's up to you if you want some or not. I'll put some on half of it. So this is the finished product. And now uh don't take my word for it. But yeah, take my word for it, it's pretty good. But if if you've been following along this video, you can you can spread some apricot preserves and butter on this if you want to and try it yourself.